When the dinosaurs were wiped from the face of the Earth, crocodiles were lucky enough to survive. Scientists believe their reason for surviving the extinction is because these animals tend to be exceptionally well adapted as they live near water, are cold-blooded, grow slowly, and can survive without food for a long time. The extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs approximately 65 million years ago did not affect the water as much as it did the land. As cold-blooded animals, they were able to eat less and survive in the dark and cold. Their slow growth enabled a more efficient metabolism. There is also, although controversial, evidence that suggests that these animals had higher intellectual levels than dinosaurs. Whatever the reasoning for their survival, there is much to appreciate about the species as they continue to play an essential role in the ecosystem as they have since the beginning of their existence. The biggest crocodile alive today is the saltwater crocodile, which can be found in the rivers and oceans from India to Australia. This animal tops out only at about 20 feet, a mere miniature model when compared to its ancestors truly the largest crocodiles that have ever existed. Now, let's take a trip back in time and take a look at these ancient giants. Mashimosaurus was one of the biggest marine crocodiles to have ever ruled the ocean. Very little is known about this creature. It lived probably from the late Jurassic to the early Cretaceous era, 160 to 130 million years ago. Mashimasaurus rex translates to fighting lizard king. Its skull alone was larger than the skull of a Tyrannosaurus rex, about 5 feet, and in total, its body measured about 35 feet long and weighed roughly 3 to 5 tons. This animal was equipped with extremely powerful bullet-shaped teeth thought to be used for dining on marine turtles and crushing bones. Much like modern-day crocs, it was an opportunistic feeder, eating almost anything that came its way. Mashimosaurus is thought to have dominated the seas of North Africa as most fossils have been found in modern-day Tunisia. Euthycodon was an ancient crocodile that could be found somewhere between 20 to 2 million years ago near Lake Turkana, a salt water lake in the desert of modern Kenya. Equipped with sharp and slender teeth, this animal's diet consisted of fish and other small creatures found in its environment. It was estimated to be about 30 to 35 feet long and characterized by a flat and slender skull with an elongated and thin rostrum or snout. Euthycodon looks very similar, although unrelated to the modern-day species of gharial crocodiles. Gharials, which inhabit modern Southeast Asia, are similar-looking, although just a fraction of the size of the enormous Euthycodon. Griposuchus was another creature of the deep you certainly would not want to meet. Its name translates to hook-nosed crocodile. This croc lived in both fresh and saltwater environments in South American countries like Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and Venezuela. It was the epitome of an apex predator and measured 30 to 35 feet in length. It was believed to have lived approximately 20 to 10 million years ago. Equipped with a long and narrow rostrum, Griposuchus was known to have a diet consisting of large fish and possibly marine animals. Much like the other megacrocs, there is still much we have to discover about Griposuchus. Ramphosuchus, meaning the beak crocodile, was similar size to Griposuchus, about 30 to 35 feet in length, and ruled the waters on the other side of the globe in what is now India also about 20 to 10 million years ago. They were also slender-snouted and similar-looking to modern-day gharials. Very few fragments of Ramphosuchus have been found. Therefore, the animal's size may be even more massive than we can fathom. Ramphosuchus fed on large fish with its sharp and slender teeth. Scientists believe that this extinction correlates with the period of the disappearance of the large fish that made up its diet. 
Morosuchus, a caiman ranging 35 to 40 feet, ruled the waters of South America about 15 to 8 million years ago. Equipped with a weak jaw and holding rows of small conical teeth in its broad and flat skull, this peculiar-looking animal gulped down most of its nutrients by filter feeding. It may have swept its jaws through the water, engulfing water and prey, and then utilized its throat muscles to force water out of the mouth, but conveniently trapping the fish behind the teeth. Many fossils from this creature have been found in Peru, where it was believed to have lived among Gryposuchus and Purosaurus. So how could an animal that feeds on such small prey become so large? Scientists think this is because Marosuchus didn't have to compete with the other species for the more substantial food sources, which allowed this animal to thrive and grow significantly in size. Dinosuchus which translates from Greek into terrible crocodile, certainly lived up to its name with giant teeth that could crush straight through bone. It ranged from 35 to 45 feet long and weighed 6 to 9 tons, making it the largest predator to dominate the waters of North America from 85 to 70 million years ago. Fossils have been found along the eastern coast and various other places in modern-day USA and Mexico. It is thought that Dinosuchus preyed on dinosaurs, patiently waiting below the water and then ambushing them when they came to the water for a drink. After drowning their prey by holding them under, using their incredibly strong bite force, they would then be able to partake in the feast. Teeth marks from Dinosuchus have also been found in turtles and other armored animals. There is also evidence that suggests that Dinosuchus, like modern-day saltwater crocodiles, might have gone out to the sea hundreds of miles away from land into the ocean. Sarcosuchus, which is known as one of the biggest freshwater crocodiles to have ever lived, measured about 40 to 45 feet and weighed more than 8 tons. The skull of this heavyweight champ alone was six feet. This creature's name translates to Flesh Crocodile Emperor, and it reigned approximately 115 to 95 million years ago. This Supercroc's fossils have been found in several countries in North Africa. Its jaws were filled with more than 100 strong teeth that were capable of crushing bone. It probably preyed on aquatic animals in the rivers, but also on dinosaurs that came too close to the water. Sarcosuchus was known to live up to 40 years, and perhaps even longer. That's about twice the age reached by modern-day crocs. Finally, Purosaurus reigned in the waters of South America, mostly in ancient Amazonia. This massive caiman grew 40 to 45 feet and weighed up to 8 to 10 tons. It is characterized by a stout and thick 4-foot skull with large conical teeth. Purosaurus was a ruler from 15 to 8 million years ago and had quite the appetite, eating up to 90 pounds of food daily to sustain its metabolic needs. Because it topped the charts with its apex predator qualities, this animal did not have to worry about competition when it came to food and could eat whatever and wherever it wanted. This begs the question, if Purosaurus was such an apex predator, how could it go extinct? Unfortunately, like many of these large animals, it couldn't adapt to the climate and geological changes that prehistoric Earth underwent as evolution favored the smaller, more compact-sized animals. All sizes and weights of these animals that have been researched through the decades are merely estimates. Scientists are doing their best with the limited amount of knowledge they have. Much of clues to the histories of these animals have been lost in the destruction of fossils over time. Unfortunately, due to various geological events throughout the millennia, no full skeletons of these animals have ever been found, nor is this likely to ever happen. But like a talented detective, researchers piece together the puzzles of the past, slowly unwrapping the mysteries of these mega-monsters. Modern-day crocodiles seem to have defied evolution and the odds, 
as they are the direct descendants from these ancient titans. One may ponder the notion that perhaps these miniature modern-day models may eventually evolve back into the giant who once dominated the prehistoric waters. After all, these animals have survived millennia and are well equipped to thrive for many more. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share, and comment below.